So what are antenna gain, EIRP, and the Fries equation when we're talking about wireless communications? Well, let's first of all think about gain. What do we typically mean by gain? So we often think about gain in terms of an amplifier. And here's an amplifier here with a voltage input and a voltage output. And we define the gain to be equal to the power output divided by the power input. And for an electrical circuit, the power is V squared divided by R. So we've got V squared, V out squared, divided by R, but we also have the same R on the denominator. So the gain is V output squared divided by V input squared. So this is the concept of gain. Now, where does this gain come from? How do we get more voltage out than we had in? Well, the answer, of course, for an amplifier is that there's a power supply. So the amplifier has a uh, set up with a circuit where there's a power supply to the amplifier. It's waiting for the input signal to come and it uses the energy from the power supply to amplify the signal. But what about when it comes to antennas? It's a bit less intuitive. So in this case, we've got the power being transmitted, PT, and we have a passive device. So where does the gain come from, from an antenna? It doesn't have a power supply, it's just a piece of metal or a shape of metal that's radiating electromagnetic waves. So what is the gain of this antenna? How do we define that? Well, let's think of, first of all, an isotropic antenna. So an isotropic antenna radiates in all directions equally. That's uh, the definition of isotropic. So we're going to consider that one first. And let's think about that one. Uh, so in that case, we have the power on the surface of this wave, which is radiating out in a circle. So the power on the surface of this uh, is equal to, uh, so this is the power density, is the transmitted power divided by the surface area of the sphere, which is 4 pi d squared. We're going to use d here because d is the distance that the waveform has traveled. And it's going to be the distance between our transmitter and our receiver in our communication system. So this is our power per unit area. And so this is the what we call the power density. And we're going to use S for that. And I'm going to put subscript ISO here. So this is the power density for the isotropic antenna. Okay, so let's now think, well, what if you have a different shape of antenna? So let's think of an antenna that might be, for example, a dish shape antenna. So we've all seen these the satellite dishes and so on. Uh, and this shape of antenna has a different radiating pattern. And this pattern has a shape to it, which means that some directions get more energy radiated compared to other directions. And so this is what we call a directed antenna. And so now we can see that we've got a concept of gain happening here because there's more energy from this directed antenna going in this direction than there was from the isotropic antenna. So this is what we mean when we say antenna gain. So how do we quantify that? How do we get a formula for the amount of gain, for the antenna gain? Well, let's think about what is happening. Let's think about the receiver antenna. This one has a, uh, a power that's coming out of it, an electrical power that's going into the receiver circuit. So we're going to call this over here PO. So we've got PT coming in. It's an electrical power. It's radiating an electromagnetic wave, which has a power density, and then it, it hits the receive antenna and comes out as an electrical uh, power into the receiver circuit. So now let's think about what's happening here. What is this power that's coming out of here? Well, we can characterize that by a thing called effective area. Okay, so let's write down here the power output equals, uh, what is it? it? Well, it's the power spec, uh, the power density, S that's going to be hitting onto that antenna. So it's the here, which is the power density at the receiver uh, times this effective area of the receiver. 
Okay, so this is a density, a power density, and this is an area. If you multiply a density by an area, you're going to get a power. So these units make sense. Okay, so let's, um, let's think about what this effective area is. And to do that, we're going to start by thinking about the isotropic case. So let's think about that. So what is the, we've got the, uh, here, we know what the power density is from an isotropic transmitter. So this is PT divided by, uh, so I'll write this here, PT divided by 4 pi d squared. And now we need to multiply this by the effective area. And I'm just going to tell you that the effective area for an isotropic receiver is given by lambda squared divided by 4 pi. Uh, so you uh, can find uh, information on that elsewhere. We're not going to do that derivation here. But what do we have now? So this is the power that's received from an ISO transmitter uh, and an ISO receiver which are D distance apart. So I'm going to say ISO transmitter and ISO receiver. That's what this is. So now we're coming back to this gain. So what are we going to get as the output from our, so this is the output power, PO, uh, and what are we going to get if we have a directed antenna? Now let's think of having a directed antenna at the receiver, first of all. So let's think about that. So this was the area over which the energy was collected from the electromagnetic wave that had this power density if it was iso, uh, isotropic at the receive antenna for this number. So now we're going to say, well, if we've got a directed antenna at the receiver as well, so if it's also having a preferential direction, so it's got a direction to it, then we're going to have a gain. And this is what we're calling here antenna gain. So I'm going to put GR because it's a gain at the receiver. Okay, so what is this gain at the receiver? Well, let's define it down here. So we've got here the gain at the receiver equals, uh, and it makes natural sense to think of, it's the power that you get as an output from your directed receiver divided by the power that you get as an output from the isotropic receiver. So now we can put this formula in here. So this is equal to uh, SAE for your directed antenna divided by SAE for your isotropic antenna. And since the uh, power density hitting on the receiver is the same if you had an isotropic receiver here or if you had a directed receiver here, then the S's cancel. And so the gain is defined as the effective area for our directed antenna divided by the effective area for our isotropic antenna. So this is, in terms of these new things, effective area. Now we've got a concept of what they are. As we said here, it's the area that is collecting energy from the waveform that's hitting upon it, which has an energy density. And you have the energy density times the area. So this is an effective area because really it's a metal piece of metal, the antenna. Uh, and so actually what this is saying is this is its efficiency at or effectiveness, let's say, effectiveness of the antenna at converting the electromagnetic waveform and electromagnetic energy into electrical energy in the wire. So I'll just say that again, it's the effectiveness of the antenna of converting electromagnetic energy into electrical energy. That's what the effective area is. And it's, it is actually counterintuitive, and often people are confused by this. So let me just explain the counterintuitive nature. Well, here the gain is bigger when you have a directed uh, antenna at your receiver, which means you have a bigger effective area. And that's often people think of that as counterintuitive because they think of the directed antenna as having a narrower beam. So they think that the the, the beam is narrower, which it is, naturally you might think that the area would be smaller if the beam is narrower. But this area is bigger, and so that's often counterintuitive to people. But let me just remind you why, it's, why it makes sense, is because you are pointing a beam and focusing a beam in a more effective way to collect energy from the waveform that is hitting upon the receiver. And because you are more effective about it, it is equivalent to having a non-directed antenna 
but collecting over a bigger area. And so that's why this effective area is bigger for the directed antenna. Okay, so this is uh, hopefully clearing up some of that uh, counterintuitive nature. Okay, so now let's put that, so now we've got this formula here, when we have an ISO, so now overall now we have the isotropic uh, transmitter and a now a directed receiver. So it's the isotropic receiver times the gain with this definition of gain. Okay, so what about, the final thing is, what about if we don't have an isotropic transmitter? So this was for the isotropic transmitter, what if we don't have that, what if we have a directed transmitter? And this brings up the concept of EIRP, which stands for Effective Isotropic Radiated Power. So I'm just going to draw a little drawing down here to, to tell us what EIRP is. And EIRP, here's the drawing, well you've got a directed transmitter, and so this is your actual uh, directed transmitter, I'll put a D in there here, and this is your ISO transmitter which is a circular transmitter transmitting in all directions. Uh, so this is how the energy is transmitting from those two different antennas. The EIRP is the power that you would have had to put into an isotropic antenna if you were to try to get the same power density as you are getting from your directed antenna in the direction of the main lobe. Okay, so uh, it's a way of relating your directed antenna to the isotropic antenna. And so the power, the EIRP power, equals the transmitted power times the gain of your transmitted uh, the, the, uh, antenna that's directed. And now, looking back at our formula over here, we had a formula where we had the power into an isotropic antenna. So now we can replace the PT here, if we have a directed antenna, with PT times GT directed. So this now gives us what we call the Fries equation. So this is where the power output equals the power transmitted times the gain transmitted of a directional antenna times the gain received from a directional antenna times lambda squared divided by 4 pi squared d squared. And this is the Fries equation for the output from the input when you have a directed antenna at the transmitter and a directed antenna at the receiver. So hopefully this has given intuition into antenna gain which can sometimes be counterintuitive with regards to these effective areas of antennas and the effective isotropic radiated power and its relationship between the directed antenna and the isotropic antenna leading to the Fries equation which tells us about the output power in a communication system with wireless communication over antennas. So if you like the video give it a thumbs up, it helps others to find it. Uh, check out the description below where there's a web page which has a fully categorized listing of all the videos on the channel. And subscribe to the channel for more videos.